JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 23rd. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar pulled back against all the other major currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian session on uh, Wednesday, except the Japanese yen. The greenback lost the most ground versus uh, GBP, NZD, and AUD in that order. Now, the weakening of the US dollar and the Japanese yen combined with the strengthening of the pound, the Aussie, and the Kiwi clearly suggests that markets traded in a risk on manner yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that a major European and US indices were a sea of green with a positive morale rolling into the Asian session today. Now, with no clear catalyst behind the improvement in risk appetite, we will just say that this adds credence to our view for some further advances, despite uh, we, are still re we are still reluctant to call uh, for a long-lasting uh, recovery. The reason we believe that uh, the reasons we believe that further advances may be looming in the midst of a still raging war in Ukraine are two. Firstly, as we explained yesterday, it seems that nowadays the setbacks or negative headlines are smaller than the advances we get when there is a glimpse of hope. Maybe most, uh, most participants remain optimistic that some progress could still uh, be made in talks between Russia and Ukraine, or maybe they believe that no other nation will need to get involved uh, militarily and that the conflict at the two nations level has been uh, already priced in. The second one has to do with monetary policy. Yes, Fed Chair uh, Jerome Powell appeared over, over like hoggish uh, once again on Monday, raising speculation that he and his colleagues may need to lift rates by 50 basis points at the upcoming gathering. According to the CME Fed Watch tool, there is a 66% uh, chance for such an action. However, investors have been aggressively hoggish even before the Fed uh, release, uh, even before the Fed released its uh, new dot plot, uh, pointing to six more quarter point hikes by the end of the year. Thus, a very aggressive Fed is also priced in uh, to a large extent, and that's probably why we see equities keep climbing higher. As for why we are reluctant to call for a long-lasting recovery. It's, uh, because of, uh, it's because of the war in Ukraine. Anything pointing uh, to this escalating to something even worse could well hurt the risk appetite again. And what uh, do we mean by something worse? Uh, for example, more nations getting, getting directly and military involved uh, in the conflict. Now, as for, as for the currencies, the yen has been uh, in a free fall. Uh, mode uh, lately and uh, besides the improvement in risk appetite another important reason for that may be may be the fact that um, uh, that other major central banks like the fed and the bank of england are raising rates at the time when the bank of japan is maintaining an extra loose uh, policy therefore the monetary policy divergence uh, between the bank of japan and the rest of the world is likely to continue to continue weighing uh, against the yen um, for a while more. Now, as for today's events, during the early European morning, we already got the UK CPIs for February we, with uh, both the headline and core rates rising by more than the forecasts suggested. At last week's meeting, Bank of England officials decided to hike interest rates by another 25 basis points via an 8 to 1 voting, with the descender calling for no increase at all. 
Remember that at the February gathering, officials lifted rates by 25 basis points as well, but the vote was 5 to 4, with uh, the descenders calling for a 50 basis points increase. Now, compared to that, last week's decisions reveals, uh, revealed a more cautious approach uh, by policymakers and raises, co raises questions as to whether and raised questions as to whether they will indeed uh, proceed uh, as aggressive as the market has been pricing in heading into the gathering. Nonetheless, accelerate, accelerating inflation further above the bank's target of 2% may have revived some expectations that the bank may need to act more quickly. Now, later in the day, UK Chancellor uh, Rishi Sunak uh, makes his spring uh, budget statement where he could announce more measures to help households and small businesses in the midst of searching fuel and other prices. So this combined with uh, the accelerating uh, CPI rates we had earlier uh, may, uh, may support some what the British pound today. Now as for the data, in the US we have new home sales for February with the forecast pointing to a small increase compared to January. Uh, and finally, besides UK Chancellor Sunak, we have a few more speakers on the agenda, including Fed Chair Powell again, as well as uh, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.